A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Start the new rescue helicopter. Hey! Build the helicopter. And off to the rescue. Prepare the lifeline. Lower the stretcher. And make the rescue. Is the LEGO Technic Airbus H175 rescue helicopter set number 4145 the single greatest model of all time? Let's find out. This helicopter has surprised me in a lot of ways. It is truly one of the best sets we have gotten in a while. But first, let's start with the box. The rear just showcases some of the features of the set, and besides that, there is nothing special about the box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. We get five numbered bags, a sticker sheet, the instructions, five propeller blades, the paired-up battery box, which comes in a separate white container, and unfortunately, this battery box uses four screws to hold the lid in place, unlike the snap-on version of the previous one. Furthermore, we get some very interesting brand new pieces, such as the new 20-tooth clutch gear for gearboxes, and it is identical to the previous double bevel version, but this one just can't mesh at 90 degrees. It is interesting that we are getting this brand new gear now, since the Ferrari Daytona, which was only released about one and a half months ago, used the older style 20-tooth clutch gear. We also get these turntable style pieces, which will be used for adjusting the blade angles of the propeller, and we also get a tiny half ball piece which will be used in the turntable setup. We also get this brand new star piece which will be used to connect the five helicopter blades at the same distance from each other. Here is the complete parts list for this set. The building process begins with the powered up battery box and we need to connect some panels on either side of the battery box. Next, we build up the following module and it connects onto the battery box. The chassis now looks like a horseshoe crab and that's pretty cool. This shrimpy little component is built up and secured onto the side of the battery box. Now, some parts of the landing gear mechanism are coming together. Next, a few beams are added and we slide in the switch which will turn on the battery box. Now, we take a few smaller components and add them together to build up the front section of the chassis. After we add the landing gear, we can connect this part onto the chassis. So far, the model looks great. The second stage begins with the front cabin. We start with this module that has a very interesting mechanism, which will have joysticks connected. Next, we add a few extra beams onto the cabin, and we can see that moving the joysticks forwards moves the beams up and down. We add two seats onto the cabin portion, and this section already has a lot of moving parts. It is actually a lot more complicated than it looks. After building it up a bit more, we can see how it works better. Moving the joysticks left and right will move the yellow gears and move specific beams at the back. From this side, we can see the movements a lot clearer. We take the cabin and connect it onto the main chassis portion. We add a couple of panels onto the front, some red ones on top, and now we add the control panel. Next, we secure everything with a few Technic frames, we add the doors, and the second stage looks phenomenal. The third bag is the fun part. We need to build the gearbox. The following frame is built up, and we have connected a tiny turntable onto a 20-tooth gear. We connect another module here, which expands the chassis a little. Next, we build the following component and secure it onto the chassis. Another beam structure is added on top to secure everything. We take a 16-tooth clutch gear with an axle, connect it to the frame, and secure the other side with a normal 16-tooth gear. Next, we take the small linear actuator and connect it to the frame. This actuator will be responsible for the landing gear mechanism. Then, we build up a little axle module with the 12th tooth gear as well as the 16th tooth clutch gear. We simply connect this onto the gearbox. We add a ton of gears onto the frame, forming the gearbox. We secure a few more gears with the driving rings, and now we build up this little frame with the two 20 tooth gears. We secure all of the gears with this exact frame, then we add some more gears outside of this frame. Now, we secure the linear clutch onto the gearbox, and this part will be responsible for the main propeller. We build this little module with the changeover catch switches, and we simply secure it onto the gearbox. Make sure that the switches are properly aligned with the driving rings, otherwise the gearbox will not work. Following that, we build this tiny little module with the worm gear setup and we connect it onto the gearbox. It will be responsible for the winch. Then, we add a little beam to secure everything in place. We build another module with the changeover catch switch and we connect it onto the gearbox. Make sure that the switch is properly aligned with the driving ring. Following that, 
we built this module with the beams and secure it on top of the gearbox. Now comes the fun part. We built the motor module with the 20 tooth gear and we connect the motor module onto the gearbox. Now let's turn on the gearbox and see how everything works. The first function of the gearbox is changing the speed of the propeller. This also changes the speed of the two engines here on the gearbox and that's something I greatly appreciate. On the other side of the gearbox we have two switches. The one on top is responsible for the winch mechanism while the one at the bottom controls the linear actuator which will be connected to the landing gear mechanism. Now we take the gearbox and simply connect it onto the main chassis of the helicopter. We also take the linear actuator and secure it onto the landing gear mechanism. Then we take a beam and secure it onto the tiny turntable. Next we take these brand new pieces which are kind of like turntables and we connect all three of these together. We simply slide it onto the Technic beam and then we just connect this piece onto the controls. This piece will be responsible for changing the angles of the propeller blades. The third bag looks great. The next stage begins with the sliding doors and they are connected onto the helicopter chassis. Now we have some awesome sliding doors. Now we need to start building the tail section of the helicopter. We start with several beams elongating the tail. Then we build up some panel modules and they are connected onto the tail. A few lift arms are also added to secure everything in place. Then we add a neon yellow yellow panel on top and slide a Technic axle into the panel. The end of the tail is built up and we simply connect it onto the main tail portion. We add a few more gears onto the tail and now this section is complete. We take the tail and simply attach it onto the main helicopter chassis. We build up a couple of panel modules and they are connected onto the sides of the tail, covering up the motor. Next we take the star piece and it is built up with a bunch of Technic linkages. We slide this module onto the propeller stick and we connect the linkages together. We slide the tail rotor onto the axle and the fourth stage looks beautiful. The fifth bag is all about adding the final touches. We build up these tiny modules with the small panels and we connect them onto the chassis. Next we build up the winch and it is securely connected onto the right side of the helicopter. We build up this big panel module and it simply slides onto the top rear of the helicopter. We add a few beams and panels and this section now looks beautiful. We start building up these two modules and they are connected onto the middle section of the helicopter. We build up this panel module and it connects to the top front of the helicopter. After that we just add the blades and the round plate and now we can finally take a closer look at the functions of the helicopter. It's almost difficult to find the perfect words to explain how I feel. I love this helicopter. I think this is one of the best LEGO Technic sets of all time. In any Technic set there are three main categories, authenticity, functionality and challenging building. This set nails all three categories perfectly. The first function of the set involves the spinning propellers. The helicopter contains a transmission and by flipping the changeover catch you can make the rotors either spin slowly or quite fast. Furthermore, the power from the motor passes through a linear clutch onto the main propeller. So you can easily stop it with your fingers without breaking anything. While it is stopped, the tail will spin and the same thing applies for the tail. Let's open up the cabin doors which open like the doors on the Back to the Future DeLorean and let's use these joystick controls. Moving the joystick either front, back, left or right will adjust the propeller blade angles in their respective directions. This setup is a lot more complicated than it looks and I think it can only be appreciated if you build the set yourself. Furthermore, you can adjust the blade angles while the propeller is spinning. The propeller blade blades are constantly changing their angles while they are spinning. I think that this is such a cool feature of the set and it is pretty accurate to how helicopters change their direction in real life. You can also control this lever here and it will essentially make all of the propeller blades be flat and not be at an angle. I really like how you can slide out these white parts on either side of the propeller so you can take a closer look at how the mechanism actually works. Furthermore, we can see here a pair of engines which is pretty cool. If you're enjoying this video so far and you would like to uncover all the secrets of LEGO Technic then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. But no pressure, 
no pressure. I appreciate how this set combines both a multi-directional gearbox as well as a transmission. Combining both of these types of gearboxes has been a dream of mine for a very long time. Speaking of the multi-directional gearbox, let's look at the other two functions. First, we have the winch, which can either be extended or retracted. I have a major problem with this winch. It passes through a Technic pin with the axle hole. Essentially, this Technic pin serves as a very weak clutch, and as a result, you cannot pull anything heavy with this winch, it will just extend all the way out. I do not understand why a worm gear is even used in the winch mechanism since the Technic pin essentially defeats the whole purpose of the worm gear. Since the winch can just be extended all the way even when it is supposed to be locked. If adding a clutch was necessary, it should have been added before the worm gear. I will definitely be modifying this winch mechanism so that there is no Technic pin here to begin with. The next function is controlled by the switch at the very bottom. It raises and lowers the landing gear. The mechanism here is pretty simple, but it is also very effective. I cannot find any flaws with it, and it is absolutely fascinating to watch. The sliding doors are also pretty cool, though the interior is nothing exciting. I think that this helicopter looks beautiful from every angle. It captures its real-life counterpart quite well. But here's what I love about this helicopter. It does not excessively rely on panels. It looks a lot more like a set from the late 2000s or early 2010s rather than a set from 2022. And I think that is absolutely awesome. This aesthetic of LEGO Technic sets is my favorite. The models look fantastic while also keeping some of the mechanisms out in the open so you can see them in action. For example, I appreciate how you can see the axle on the tail of the helicopter and I like how you can see some of the gears. The helicopter is the perfect successor to the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey, the last major LEGO Technic aircraft, and since we have gotten our first Airbus licensed set in LEGO Technic, now we should get some Airbus airplanes, such as the A330 or the A380. So what are the pros as well as the cons of the LEGO Technic Airbus H-175 rescue helicopter? For the pros, we have the return of the basic powered up battery box. This battery box was supposed to be introduced in the Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey, of 2020 but unfortunately that set got cancelled and as a result that battery box became extremely difficult to find and it was actually not sold in North America for nearly two years. So because of that it was incredibly difficult for me to obtain and I'm so glad that it has finally returned in a widely released LEGO Technic set. And another major pro of the helicopter are the functions. We get the advanced control system with the joysticks and the uh, helicopter blades we get the combination of a multi-directional gearbox as well as a transmission. That's been a dream of mine for a long time. I'm so happy that LEGO Technic has finally combined two different types of, of these exact gearboxes. That just makes me so happy as a crazy fan of gearboxes. And another big positive of this set is the aesthetics. I don't like how most of the modern Technic sets excessively rely on panels. This set has that perfect balance between the open chassis as well as, you know, cover Covering some stuff up with panels. It reminds me of that aesthetic that LEGO Technic sets had in the late 2000s as well as the early 2010s. It just makes me so nostalgic and so happy. But what about the cons of the set? Well, I can only really think of one major one, which is the winch. I really wish it did not have to use the uh, pin, the LEGO Technic pin, as the connection. It essentially serves as a very weak clutch, so the winch is not practical in any way, shape, or form for picking up heavy objects. But besides that, I think that this set is worth every penny. Really, it pushes the limits and boundaries of what's possible with LEGO Technic helicopters. You should absolutely buy this set on August 1st when it becomes available. And would you like to uncover more secrets of LEGO Technic? Then click on the video right over here. This is your Unbreak Me Here and I'll see you in the next one.